This year in English 3, we've been looking at different modes of art and literature and tracing those changes through American history. And one thing I've been trying to emphasize throughout is how each new movement uh, can kind of be understood as a rejection of what came before. You know, we, we've talked before about how uh, Romanticism was a rejection of the rationalism, rationalist ideas that came before, and then realism was a rejection of some of those romantic ideas. Well, now, in a similar way, modernism, I think, can partly be understood as a rejection of realism. Now, the period that we're talking about is the time after World War I, and during that time, modernists were disillusioned with traditional forms of art, music, and literature. This feeling of disillusionment, um, I, th I think, is seen all throughout American culture. And in, in history, you might have learned about um, kind of this this feeling of, of of disillusionment that came about because of the war. Sometimes that generation of people who went through World War One uh, are talked about as the lost generation. And we see this also in, in expressions of art and literature of the time. And in particular, artists and writers um, started to question whether these traditional forms of literature really reveal the truth. And, and in particular, there's a criticism of realism. Now, you know, just to review, uh, realism really aspires to present the world as it truly is. And you know, here, we have a painting of a forest. It is done in a very realistic style. Um, I, I, to me, this really resembles what you see. There's nothing romantic here. You have trees that have fallen down, that are rotting. It is not necessarily ugly. It's just this is this is how nature really appears. Um, and I think I shared this with you also when we were talking about realism, um, depicting common laborers, engaging in everyday activities. Uh, these are the kinds of things that realism really aspired to. Um, now, modernists did have a criticism of that, and I think it's expressed best by the French writer Marcel Proust. He said, literature that is satisfied merely to describe things, to furnish a miserable listing of their lines and surfaces, is notwithstanding its pretensions to realism, the farthest removed from reality the one that most impoverishes and saddens us. The way I understand this is that writers like Marcel Proust, they looked at art and literature that was content to merely describe things or maybe describe surface realities. And first of all, I think their reaction to that was, so what? So we have a painting of what a forest looks like. Okay, what does that do for us? How does that illuminate um, our experience as humans? What does that reveal about the way that human society actually functions? I don't know, these, these might seem like uh, silly criticisms, but, uh, but I think that there is a valid point to this. And, and, I, and, the, and the other thing that I think Marcel Proust is saying in this is that maybe these things, have these we refer to as pretensions to realism, um, they may claim to be depicting real life, but I think the modernists also saw that there is more to reality than what you see on the surface. Um, this will make sense when we get into some of the specific ideas of modernism. Um, so here are just a few ideas that we see creeping into art and literature during the time of modernism. One, that reality is relative. Maybe there is not you know, an objective depiction of reality as we see it in, in that painting of the forest. Um, there, there are other realities, the realities of the mind, that, um, that our, our perception of reality itself is dependent on our own mind and how we are interpreting information we're taking in, that we, we, we experience reality, experience everything through the lens of our own minds and our own sensations and perceptions. Um, there's also a shift from external to internal reality, which is also, I think, connected to that first point I was just talking about. You know, rather than the reality of the physical world, 
writers and artists at this time started to pay attention more to these internal realities, what's going on inside of somebody's mind, that that also is a kind of reality. And we also see during this time, um, there starts to be a blurring between fiction and reality. Um, there's this fantastic painting here. Uh, the French there, which I'm not going to try to pronounce, says, this is not a pipe. And taken one way, this may seem like kind of an absurdist painting. It is very clearly a pipe, isn't it? But I think we can also interpret that statement literally. It is not a pipe. It's a painting of a pipe. Or if we want to be uh, very literal about it, this is not even a painting of a pipe as far as you know, the way that we're looking at it. It is a digital reproduction of a painting of a pipe that you're viewing on your device at this moment. Um, so I think that's one thing that modernism starts to reveal to us, that what we take for reality um, may not be as simple as it at first appears. Um, sticking with the art world, you know, this is where you know, we start to see a movement away from literal representational art to more abstract art. You know, this, of course, is a painting by Pablo Picasso, a uh, famous pioneer of cubism in painting. Uh, clearly, he was not trying to uh, depict the world as it actually is some kind of objective reality. His paintings instead are trying to capture I don't know, what you might call a subjective reality or an internal reality, maybe the impression of a face rather than a person's literal face. I don't know. I am not an art critic, so forgive me if I fumble a little bit in trying to describe these things. I'm just trying to express my understanding of it. Um, you, we also have paintings that move even farther away from representationalism into pure abstraction. Paintings that are expressing feeling through through color and movement um, and that don't really seem to have any attachment to any clear object in the physical world. Uh, there are also, this, this particular painting here is influenced by the Art Deco movement. You know, during, during this period of modernism, um, I think it is also important to understand that it was partly influenced by advancement in technology. You know, during this time in 20th century, this was a time when there was a feeling that there are all kinds of new inventions coming into the world. You have the automobile, you have motion pictures. Um, architecture is reflecting this in, in, you know, in some of their modern styles. And Art Deco as a style of art is also a reflection of that with very geometric looking shapes. Um, all right. So we shift over to writing now, and in the same way that I, I just showed you several examples of experimentation with new forms of visual art, well, in the writing world, uh, we see a lot of experimentation with new styles and, and really branching off in all different directions. There is no one style that we attach to modernism. And in the coming days, I'm gonna share with you uh, different examples of literature that all experiment with new styles in different ways. Um, you will we'll read a poem by T.S. Eliot. Eliot is known for weaving very dense illusion and symbolism in his poems that can make it very difficult to understand. Um, but also, we're gonna look at some writing that is at the opposite end of the spectrum, extremely minimalistic. Um, I'll share with you a story that uses what we call stream of consciousness writing that attempts to replicate you know, like the internal monologue, you know, what, what, what it actually feels like to be inside of someone's head, you know, kind of an extreme example of that shift to an internal reality rather than external reality. Uh, we'll read a short story that's written in the Southern Gothic style. This is the one that I teased earlier as possibly the most disturbing story that we have in our literature book that, that we read in English 3. And then um, also some poetry in the Harlem Renaissance, Renaissance style that takes its influence from music like jazz and blues. Um, so those are just a few things that I have planned for you in the next couple of weeks. 
And, and, and like I said, all of these things are all very different from one another, all go, branching out in different directions. But the one thing that they have in common is that they all experiment with new forms of art. And if, if there's one thing I could tell you to sum up what modernism is about, it is just that. Ezra Pound um, said, his, his, his mantra, he's famous for art, is saying, make it new. Um, that was what he encouraged artists and writers to do at the time, just to go out into the fringes and create something that the world has not seen before. That's modernism.